Hey guys, Mike from Magnanimous here, and we're back live from Studio One for another Build of the Day. Today's is a really fun one that I've been looking forward to all week. As you can see, uh, well, I had that backwards, there we go. As you can see behind me, we've got some RGB lights, and so today we're talking about RGB lighting and all the different p tools and pieces we have to make your job and uh, lighting scenario as easy and simple as possible while letting you be as creative as you can. If you guys have questions while we're going, please comment below. Uh, but today is going to have a lot of buildup, so we may not be able to get to the Q&A at the end. But we'll do our best to answer the questions in the chat when the video is all through. Uh, as always, if there's gear that you guys want to see, comment below and let me know because I want to highlight the gear that you're interested in. So we'll be coming back next week and I want to highlight some stuff that you guys recommend. So let me know what you want to see, whether it's a lens, a camera, a piece of support gear, or a cool build that you had in mind and want to see how it could be accomplished. Let me know and we'll highlight that. Uh, today we have a lot of different lighting options to look at. We'll be looking at the Ari Sky Panel. We'll be looking at the Astera Titan tubes, the Quasar Science two foot and four foot RGB tubes, and our brand new Light Matte Spectrum 2 panels. So let's go ahead and start with the RE Sky panel and we're, we're, we'll work our way through. First things first, we need a stand because lights. So we'll pull out this good old combo stand here. I like my stands to be on wheels when I can because I don't have to lug a stand around all the time, and it's much, much easier. The RE Sky panel, we carry both the S60 and the S120. Both of them will require a junior mount of some kind, so I have a low boy combo here. And I'll go ahead and grab our RE Sky panel from off frame. For those of you who haven't seen it before, this is the S60. It's about two foot by, or I'm sorry, uh, two by three in uh, size, but it gives you a good amount of output. I'm just going to flip them around so that my junior pin is on bottom, and I'm going to pop them down in our stand, and I'll lock him down to secure. Now, the only thing about the sky panels that uh, you have to be aware of is they're hungry for power. For full output, it requires 48 volts uh, input, and so it's hard to power this off of batteries or anything. So to power it, you do get a pretty beefy ballast, which is this guy here. And it comes with a handy little mount here on the back. It quick releases on the back of here using a small square mounting plate. And I can just pop it in and lock that down. And then to mount it to the sky panel, I'm going to slide it onto this bracket here. If you haven't worked with sky panels before, they've kind of become an industry standard at this point because they have some of the best color out there and they're going to render extremely rich color tones. We are actually using a S60 as our backdrop light right now. So it's given me this really nice, clean daylight color behind me. And this would be kind of a traditional setup. We would then need to run a three pin XLR, which carries our power from the ballast to the light, and that'll run here. And then we would have a locking cable here for power. Now, that's all well and good, but it's not very mobile, and it's hard to take it outside and kind of stretch the capabilities of the light. So I wanted to show you guys how to work with the S60 without the ballast using batteries. So we'll go ahead and drop our ballast off. I am going to keep the black mounting bracket on the back of my light here because that's where our battery mount is going to mount. The S120 unfortunately is too big to power off of a uh, battery, so we're using the S60 today. But if you're interested in checking the 120 out, go to our website. It's essentially double the length of this light and will still mount to one single yoke underneath. And so you'll just have even more output. The sky panels are really nice because they feature a integrated soft diffusion panel, which is this guy right in front that I'm removing. When I remove it, you can actually see your LED lights underneath. And this panel acts to soften out that light and give us the really nice flat, even coverage that the sky panels are known for. So I'll pop that guy back in and we lock him with the two latches up top. Then 
we have this small bracket here. Now, I'd said that the sky panel requires 48 volts for its input over DC, but when you switch to battery, it's actually going to reduce its output by 50% so that we're able to power it off of two Anton Bauer gold mount batteries, which give us 14 volts each, totaling out to 28 volts overall, which is going to be able to run this in what's called battery mode. So let me flip this around so you guys can see. And has the same square mount on the back of it, just like the ballast did. And so I'm just going to pop that in just the same and lock him down like so. And then we have a small four pin XLR that I'm going to run into our plug here. And then if we rotate this down, you can see we have a 48 volt DC input for power. And then next to it, we have a 28 to 36 variable voltage input for battery. And we're going to get right to that 28 volts with our two Anton Bauer batteries. I have two Anton Bauer 90s set aside here. So I'm just going to pop both of these guys on. Make sure he's seated all the way. And then we can just flip our switch in the center to power on our light. You have a small control box right here, which is where we'll actually control all the output of the light and everything. And right now, it's booted up in its standard uh, color temperature. So I can adjust its output with my blue dial. So I can brighten this up, and you'll see the backdrop getting brighter behind me. And then I can change its color temperature from 28,000 Kelvin to a full 10,000 Kelvin on the other end. We have uh, the option over here to do some plus or minus green or some magenta adjustments to uh, dial in the exact shading that we need. And that's really where you'll find that the RE Sky Panel is shining. And it's just so customizable and so adjustable that you can match just about any lighting out there. And it's just a matter of matching the RE in its uh, exact green or magenta tones and, and really just dialing all that in. But we're here for the RGB. So we'll just hit mode. It's going to swi switch us over to a hue and saturation readout. I already have my saturation up to 100, so we're good there. We're already seeing the red color come through on the other end. Uh, but we can use our uh, other dial, I'm sorry, our blue dial then. Nope, that's still our up, but there we go, to do our hue adjustment. It's going to give you hue on a 360 uh, degree scale. 360 being my max, and then I can go all the way down to a zero degrees on the other end. I'm going to turn this so you can see it on our good old stand-in Aristotle there. And you'll notice that our light is fairly harsh. Now, we are at full output, but say we wanted to soften this out, and we didn't want him to be so overexposed, and we don't want to see harsh shadows or anything like that. We want it to be much softer. Well, in that case, we have the RE S60 pop-up bank from Camara, which is a small foldable softbox that's going to pop onto the front of our light. To do that, uh, I'm going to turn off the light just so I don't blind you guys as I'm putting it on and you guys can see everything I'm doing. But I'm just going to orientate it so that it's facing the camera so you can see how I mount this. You'll notice there's two Velcro straps. These are going to wrap around the entire light. So I'm going to go ahead and undo these. And I just start by draping them over the light. And it's not going to line up perfectly yet. I'm just looking to get it around my light. I'm going to feed in both of my straps so that they just barely connect and are fed through. Oop, that one didn't stay. No worries. There we go. Once we get it just kind of rough around here, we'll actually feed in the corners of the softbox so that it actually stays in place. And I'll show you guys in the back your loop that we're attaching here. It's just this guy right down here. And it's just a matter of feeding your strap through 
and Velcroing it down like so. So then back in front, we're just gonna take the corners of our soft, soft box and connect them in. Inside there's a strap that is going to fit around the corner to prevent the soft box from going too far into the light. So you'll see right there that strap has caught on our corner there. And it's caught our corner down there. It looks like our right side is off by just a little bit. So we just need to come around and there we go. Once that's in, we're just going to turn our light back around and cinch in our Velcro straps to lock it in place. And then each softbox will come with a half and double, I'm sorry, a single and double diffuser, which is just a soft film to put in the front of our softbox. So I'm going to go ahead and drape this in front. And I just like to feed one corner in first. And then I can turn it and fully secure each side of our soft box. And let's go ahead and pop this guy back on. And there we go. I can dim this down a little bit. But you'll already start to see that we are much softer. And on our shadows here, we're not getting as much of a hard shadow. And it's more softer in its roll off. And that's because of the diffuser here. This is the lightest diffuser. We could increase the diffusion to soften out even more. We could even throw an additional diffuser in front of it, like an 8x8, a 4x4 silk, or something like that, to knock it down even more. But this is just a really quick, easy way to control the light a little bit, have it be a much softer throw. And it's with our battery adapter, so we stay fully mobile with this. I can move it around wherever I need, and it's still going to give me that full output that I'm looking for, at least in terms of the battery. Uh, you can still adjust modes to keep adjusting through settings. We have uh, preset gel settings, so you can match other gels and things like that or you can dial in specific looks. Preset effects and things like that make it extremely useful for a variety of shoots, and it's gonna be the highest output RGB light that we carry. So a great one to check out. Let's go ahead and move on to one of our tube lights. We're gonna talk about the Astera Titan tubes. I actually have one right here. I preemptively rigged from our grid, hanging right here, I could pop him on. And one of the great things that you'll find with pixel tubes is that they're very, very flexible. I don't have to plug this into the wall. It's fully battery powered. So I can hang it from our grid and things like that and have it be much, much more mobile than any other tube light typically could be. Right now I have it rigged off of a eye hook on the top of our light, just hanging from a safety chain rigged around our grid. And they have threaded points on both ends, so you can very, very quickly and easily mount them or hang them or something like that. I have an additional one on the side here, and I'm going to put it on a tripod stand, which is this small guy here. He just folds out like so, and there's a small threaded mount there, and we can thread that into the bottom of our light. and countersink our washer to tighten down. And then we can set it wherever we need to. This will be great for event lighting, things like that, or anytime you want to be able to handhold the light to do a particular effect or Hollywood a camera and be able to quickly and easily set it down. The really nice thing about the Astera, they come with a Bluetooth box 
This is a that has an internal battery. Plenty of battery life, so you're not dying in the middle of a shoot or anything. And this DMX of the tube lights to so that your phone can control it. And Astera has called the Astera app. I can turn this on and um, a belt or a pocket. And then I and all I'm gonna do is down my power button on the to pair, and it's going to enter what's called blue mode, where it's gonna start flashing blue. And that's it be going into its ready to connect mode. And I'm going to do that with my floor light as well. And then I'm going to connect my Astera app to the Astera box. There's a small pen that's on the back of the blue or the Astera box. So when you first connect, it'll ask you to attach that. And then you'll just need to go to connect new lights. And it'll ask you before pairing to turn them to blue mode. We've already done this, and we'll hit OK. And it's essentially scanning for any lights that are running blue mode. Our Astera's come in a kit of four, so you can connect all four tubes simultaneously to the app. And it's going to go ahead and turn solid as soon as it's connected. So we're just waiting for our floor mount to connect for us. There we go, and we're done. And the really cool thing with the Astera app is that it reads uh, left to right like a book. So as you go, you start on the left to connect everything. Once everything's connected, I can move over one tab. And this is where I can choose which lights I'm controlling. Currently, I'm set to all lights, but I could create an individual uh, set for two of the lights that I wanted to pair. Or if I wanted each light to be individual, I could create one for each of them. And I can choose multiple of these simultaneously so that I could control them all. And once I've selected the lights that I want to control, I move over and you have all of your effects pre-built. I'm going to switch to Wedding, and you'll notice that both of my lights automatically switch. The cool thing with Wedding is that it has a running light that'll go up and down. And we can switch between a lot. We have fire effects and presets. But if we wanted to create our own, we can just hit Add and choose from either a preset static and things like that. Or we can just go ahead and move over and start editing the preset effect right away. I can add additional colors. I can add additional streaks and different movement through it. Because it is a full pixel tube, I can actually create my own effects and my own movements. It allows you to rename each light, so I constantly get them back from other renters where they'll have renamed one that's like above kitchen sink, below window left, and things like that to really set where they want them in their frame. If you don't want to hang it or put it on a stand, you can even just mount it to a standard C stand or something like that. Our kit comes with a variety of mounting options, and we have an additional mounting kit that comes with even more plates and clamps. But you'll get basically these small little U-hooks. It's got a hinge on one side, and all I'm going to do is pop it around my light and it'll connect like so. And I have a small lock that I'll slip in on the opening side to lock it in place so that it can't come off. Then I can take a baby spud like this and thread it directly into it. And I could easily rig this from a stand or something like that uh, just by attaching it to a C-stand arm and holding it like that. Very, very flexible lights and arguably the most versatile out of any that we have. I also love that the battery life is very adjustable. The app features the ability to set the runtime that you would like for the light. So you can go anywhere from one hour to 20 hours, and it'll automatically adjust the maximum output of the tube to give you that total runtime. So if you want the highest output, you can set it to one hour, but if you want to have you know, say you're shooting a 10 hour day, set it for 10 hour runtime, and you're going to have it on for the entire shoot without having to worry. Awesome lights and great for music videos or anything that you want to be very mobile with. Uh, we were actually just shooting a uh, stand up for a video on our probe lens, and I had one of these, and I was spinning it to create lighting effects that would be much more difficult to create without creating a whole big light rig. But because this is cableless and all battery powered, I could very easily spin it without having to worry about cables and things like that flying everywhere. So they're very, very versatile in that sense. A great one to check out. But 
The one downside I would say on them is that their output is not the highest. So if you're looking for a tube light with the highest output, that brings us to our quasar tubes. The quasar tubes, we have two foot and four foot varieties. This here is going to be your two foot. And it has a small control module on the side, power switch, and then a plug in the corner for an AC cable. And it just has a small head cable that locks into it. And these are going to be much higher output than the other tube lights because they do require that you plug them into the wall. They are still light enough that you can easily hand hold them for holo Hollywooding a shot or something like that. And they offer you the same adjustments. They can get hooked up to DMX and you can connect two lights together to have them wirelessly communicate to each other so that they match each other or one is slightly behind another one. But you'll notice, especially if I put it up to me, that it's right away just a lot higher output than what our Astera tube was. For mounting, I always prefer to have a C-stand because the knuckle makes attachments much, much simpler. We have a variety of plates. This right here is an example of a single mounting plate. So I'm going to go ahead and just attach this to our knuckle here. Well, you know. There we go. And so I'll loosen here and throw our knuckle on, tighten down like so. And then I can take my tube light, and he'll pop in right like that. And it's going to hold the light for me. And then I can do all my adjustments right here on my control. This is full output, but I can still dial in my intensity. So these lights in the back of me are actually four foot quasars, and we have them dimmed all the way down to 1% uh, because we needed them to be as low as possible so you guys still got the color from them. This is doing white light, but if we want it to do uh, color, we just switch over to hue, and we have, once again, full 360 degree hue control. Looks like our saturation's on zero, so we'll need to turn that up so you guys can actually see the color. There we go. And there we have our full 360 degree hue. I'm going to dim this down so you guys can make out the color so it's not just white. We'll go down to our 1% again. And that's really just how much output these lights have in order for me to get it to show up on screen well for you guys. I have to go down to the lowest possible output that I could do. And that's where these guys really shine. They can go in frame if you want to have a creative light. You can still hang them or rig them from stands. But they can very, very easily be used as a key light, a fill light, or something like that. Uh, if you remember the top-down shot that we've had in other videos, I've had a two-footer with just some diffusion in front of it as our light, because I could very easily rig it overhead from a C-stand. And that's really where these guys shine, especially the two-footers. They're lightweight and easy to, to uh, move around like that. I'm going to pop this off, though, because I want to show you the four-footer. So I'm going to replace our single mount with a double mount. And that's going to let us mount two lights horizontal to one another and have them go from the same stand. I'm going to flip my pen around. You can run it in a multitude of directions, but for the knuckle setup that I have here, I prefer to have my pen go out the bottom, which is just as simple as loosening this thumb screw right here and flipping the pen around. It's got two studs in it that line up with the holes on the plate to lock it into a given position so that I can line that up, tighten it down, and now it is secured in a different orientation for me so that I can run it down like so. And then we can go ahead and pop on our two footer. And then we'll take our four footer and run him right underneath. And that's just going to give us more output than the two footer will on its own can power off the same outlet. I'm actually going to flip him around because it my plug's on the other side. And 
And there we have two lights horizontal. We could essentially double the output. Say we hooked up two two-footers, you're now twice as, uh, the out, twice as much output as you would have with one. And they're easily rigged from the same stand. And this is really going to just add in more variety to how you can use these lights. Because if you had to have two stands, it gets a little clustered. Uh, we did an Instagram TV about our RGB tubes the other day. And you can look in the frame and see the number of stands we had. Every single light had its own stand. And because of that, it just was very clustered behind me. So with this, you can mount lights together and just have an easier time doing that setup. Quasars are super useful. That I would say they're less versatile than the Asteras because they don't have the app control. So you can't dial in custom settings like you can the Asteras. But for people who are looking for the tube light aesthetic and want more output, there's really no one else that can give you the output that the Quasars are going to have. Let's go ahead and look at the new lights that I was talking about. These are the Light Matte Spectrum 2s. I'm just going to move our quasars off to the side. And we've got a few of these guys in. But you'll notice I can very easily hold this with just one hand. And that's how light this is. It's an extremely thin panel with just one cable going in for power. I do have an external ballast, but the panel itself is so lightweight, I could very, very easily rig this in a multitude of ways. I have a stand mount here, and it's just going to mount to the back of the light via a twist lock. I'll line up each of these small mount points and just give it a slight twist and my lock pin will lock in place. To remove it, it's just the reverse. I'll pull out and twist and it'll come out right off. And we'll lock it back on. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it straight down on my stand to lock him in place. And then we do need to get our ballast on. The ballast comes in two parts. There's this piece here, which is our main control box, essentially the brain of the light. It's where we'll do our hue adjustments, our color controls, and things like that. And I like to hang that from the C-stand because there's not an easy way to mount this. They do have some loops here, so I could run a cable through and hang it that way. But they have this really easy uh, carrying handle right here. So I like to use that, and I'll just hang it like so, so it stays in place. We then need to run power. We have a XLR cable here. It's very long, so if you wanted to set the control box away from the light, you could. For our purposes today, I'm going to leave them together. But this will just connect in the top here. It looks like an XLR cable, but it isn't. It is a special type of connector specific to these lights. So just be aware, you won't be able to use this with a di another light like that. But then we'll run this into the 48 volt output on the light, or on the ballast, I mean. And then there is a AC adapter portion to it that runs from our control ballast into the wall for power. It has the same twist lock on the back here and some Velcro straps to hold it in place. And I'm just going to twist lock that on the exact same that we had done for the mount on the back of the light. Lock them in place. The release is below, right down here. There's just a small button that you'll press, and it twists so that you can remove it for packing up to keep things smaller and lighter. And then it just has a cable here that's going to run into a threaded locking connector on the top. So we'll run that in and tighten him down to secure. And then lastly, we have one AC cable that will run from our outlet into our light. Now, this light is unique in that it doesn't have a power switch. To turn it on and turn it off, you just plug power in. If you're looking to turn it off easily and quickly, I would use the uh, XLR style releases just because they're faster and easier to unplug. So if you're needing to turn it off quickly, you can just turn it off there. 
And so that this stays a little cleaner for you guys, I'm actually going to remove our AC ballast so that I can show you guys the controls. And I'll set him down. Because our controls are going to be here on the back. You'll notice that our display is already turned on. And there's a switch down here and two thumb knobs that we use to control it. And we can use the readout here to so that we can see what our settings are. The switch here switches your modes. Up is going to be a true uh, like uh, non-RGB white light. So you can use uh, tungsten or daylight balance based on your needs. But we're here for RGB, so we're going to switch it down. And we can control the Kelvin temperature, the uh, intensity, and we can switch it over to a hue control as well. One of the things I like about this is that the knobs offer uh, very quick adjustments. So let me first get our saturation up so we can see our color. And you'll notice that I can turn and do a very fine adjustment. But if I push my knob in and turn, it does a very fast adjustment. So I can quickly uh, audition various colors and adjust between them. And I can do that all from this ballast here. I can then switch back and still adjust my white light if I need to, to change how the color's tone is a little bit or better match a particular uh, white balance or something like that. And then I've been pleasantly impressed by the output of these lights. For something so small, it still packs a punch, which is very, very nice for how portable and lightweight it is. It's also adjustable as well. We can rig it out with a soft box, very much like we did our uh, sky panel. For that, we're going to take an attachment here, which is called the poly skirt. And it's just a fold out uh, kind of barn door. It doesn't give you the adjustments that a barn door does. But it's going to have two sides of Velcro. One's going to connect to the light, so I can run it here and just press it against the mat to secure it in place. It's got a tension string that runs around it to keep it from uh, folding out too far or anything like that. So I found it's actually very quick and simple to set up. And then we have a small grid here that I'm going to run in front to soften out our lights output a little bit. And very similar to the sky panel, we're just going to drape it over and Velcro it down on the sides. I like to get one corner stuck first and then I'll adjust all my other corners around that. I found that's just easier. You're not fighting Velcro the whole time. And that's just going to give us a nice, softer light output. Like I said, it's really going to help you on your shadow roll off. You're not going to get as hard shadows. And yeah, I've been pleasantly impressed with the light mat spectrums. We've only had them for, what, a day or so now. So we're definitely going to be playing with them a lot more. We'll have some more content coming out for them in the future. So definitely stay tuned. We have this smaller guy as well as a larger version of it for more output and a uh, larger throw. So definitely check that out if you guys are interested. RGB lighting is very unique in that it offers you more color control than traditional white light. Not only can you dial in colors, but you can match lower CRI rated lights. So if we wanted to match the sky panel with a Kino or something like that, we can dial in color very easily that way. You can also pre-match gels, which is huge uh, if you want to throw on a full CTB or something like that. You can do that within the settings of a lot of these lights to emulate what that gel would look like, offering more versatility than other lights typically can. And all the options that we showed today have been huge for our inventory. The light mats are just a newer addition that I'm very excited to get out for you guys. So if you're interested in checking any of this light, these lights out, definitely visit magrents.com. We have everything listed on there. And then we're streaming live from Studio One, as always. So if you guys are interested in streaming, we've got all the gear that you need to accommodate that. Uh, not only can we hook you up with gear, but our partner over at PerfectCircle.pro can hook you up with gear and an operator to take the strain of setting up a stream off of your back so you can focus on the creative side of it. So if you're interested in getting started streaming and have been intimidated by the gear, check out our partners over at PerfectCircle.pro, and we can give you a hand with that. As always, guys, this has been Mike coming live from Studio One. 
for a build of the day. I'll be back next Monday streaming live at 5, so I'll see you guys then. And if there's any gear you want to see, just comment below, and we'll try and highlight that within the coming weeks. Thanks, guys. Take care.